episode. Okay. So, welcome to today's offering, as it were, for you guys out there. Um, let's just move my phone. We're going to start standing today. I'm going to take you through a really nice, easy way of warming up and loosening the joints out in each area. So let's start with a little connection first. We can still do our five minutes of mindfulness standing. And actually, it's a really good thing to, um, to practice because you can do it any time of the day. Standing in a queue is perfect when you're getting irate about um, how slow the queue is, especially around Christmas time. So we stand normally, we plant our feet into the ground. And we just start by feeling the feet and the texture against the skin, feeling the feet on the floor. Connecting for a moment. Then we start to observe the breath. And at this point, we kind of pull our gaze into the back of our eyes so that we're not looking at anything in particular. So if you were stood in the supermarket queue, you wouldn't really look any different to anybody else. There's no need to close your eyes, especially. So you just start by feeling the feet on the ground, maybe noticing your posture. So checking out through the legs and the knees, feeling starting to relax through those areas. Up into the thighs, maybe a little soft bend in the knees will help you relax a little bit. And also um, when you bend the knees, the lower back tends to soften and lengthen slightly. So we're just paying attention to our body, to what's here right now. Bringing that awareness up through the body, into the hips and the lower back and the spine. And we take a little sweep through this area, breathing in, breathing out. So all the while conscious of your breath and as you move through each zone, you're breathing in and out of that area and just sensing in, building that awareness up through the body. Feel the breath moving into those spaces, so up through the back sides of the back, middle of the back, the upper back, maybe feeling how the shoulders can start to soften here as well. So those few minutes in that supermarket queue, could you be you just relaxing through the body, breath by breath, moment by moment. So up to the shoulders and maybe breathing in and out, down through the arms, elbows, into the lower arms and the wrists. And feeling the hands and all of the fingers and the thumbs all the way to the tips. Still conscious of your breath moving, building up awareness through these areas, coming back up to the back of the neck, breathing in here and up through the back of the head to the crown, settling the awareness at the top, breathing in, feeling all those hair follicles, Maybe even some strands of your hair touching your skin. And then down into the forehead, 
feeling how soft the eyes are when they've got nothing in particular to look at. Owl gaze. Relaxing the cheeks and the jaw. Coming into the throat. Into the chest and the expansion with each breath. And the feeling of the heart beating. All the way into the belly. Into creation itself. The magical pot of the belly. Breathing in and out. And here we are. Right here, right now. So, just start to refocus, start to look around you and pull the focus out from the back, out to the front, start maybe lifting one foot and the other, you can point the toes away there, just to release the ankles a little bit. But we're actually going to start from the top and then work our way down. So we want to make sure that we have enough room around us to make a full circle with our arm without touching anything. So I think, just checking behind, yes, I've got enough room. Okay, so standing with ease, we're going to start with the forward ones and allow your body to move with it. Don't just move from the shoulders. But allow it to come through the waist and the torso and allow your head to move from side to side and just make the movement as easy as possible to get those arms up and over so we mobilize the shoulder joint to its maximum in this direction slow down pause this time we're going to go back we're going to go maybe a little bit slower and i want you to think about maybe backstroke in a swimming pool or in a beautiful lake. So maybe a little bit slower. Keep the breath nice and smooth still. Even if it's speeding up. As we move through these joint spaces. We are warming up so the heart is going to beat a little bit faster. Okay, let's come to, let's pause. Let's bring the hands, clasp the hands together, allow the elbows to be loose, and we come into this lovely movement for the wrist joint and the shoulder. Feel it up there as well. And of course, the elbows. Let's pause and go the other way. Excellent. Okay, let's bring the backs of the hands together, look a little bit more into those wrist joints, and just press softly and let the elbows be nice and heavy. And then push those hands away, and then bring them all the way through and back out. We offer the palms up. We're getting a little bit more through the shoulders here and the other joints in the arm as well. And just loosen out there, just flap those arms, let some of that tension go. Let's open the stance a little bit here. Nice strong legs, point the toes out, protect the knees. We're going to circle with the waist. Nice, smooth circles. Adjust your feet as you need to. If you've taken them too far out, bring them in a little bit, see if that makes a difference. It will just depend on your um, hip rotation and your knee joints as well. 
So make it easy on yourself by taking the stance where you feel the circle is nice and smooth. Okay, let's change direction. Let's go the other way. So we're getting into the lower back here as well. We get that back bend as we push the hips out. We get a little forward bend. And we're getting this side here, side there. So it's a nice, big, juicy movement. Okay, have we changed direction? I think we did change direction, but I'm not sure. So I'll go back the other way a little bit and then back again. And let's come a little bit closer with those feet. Let's bend the knees, place the hands on the knees, and just a circle. Get right into the foot there. You can hear my joint clicking away there. It's obviously catching on something. Circling down and up. Let's change direction. Let's go the other way. Feel that ankle joint. And of course you're hinging with the knee as well. So let's come up. Let's see if we can get our stilettos on tonight. So you're going to bring one heel up and then you're going to swap with the other. One comes up, one goes down. We get a little wiggle as well through the hips, a little sassiness. You can kind of make it a bit more than it is. You shrug the shoulders as well and then take them down the back. Anything goes. So let's just pause again here. Let's take the right foot slightly back and run the ball of the foot into a bit of a toe stretch, so the heels up, and we're just going to circle. It's almost like, you know, a bit of an Elvis kind of move. Uh huh. You can do your Elvis lip curl. But you're getting into the ball of that foot there. I can feel it at the top of my foot as well. Change direction. See what it feels like to go the other way. Maybe not quite as natural. Or, or maybe it is. Let's flick that out. Shake it off. And let's do the other side. So left foot back. Up onto those toes. Stretching through the toes. Heels right up and back. And then ooh, get your little... Elvis knee swagger going on and getting into the hips as well and the lower back again. And your arms can just do what they want and then change direction. See what it feels like to go the other way. And let's shake that one off. Okay. We'll just do a little bit more loosening around the waist and the upper body. So, my feet are more than hips width, toes pointing out, and I'm just going to move my waist, and my arms are just simply going to follow. And turn the head as well. And just think about it all coming through the waist, and the, you look kind of like a rag doll that just follows the momentum. You can start bending one knee and the other. That can feel quite nice. And you can take the arms up towards the shoulders and give them a little pat. I'm lifting my toes now as well, one after the other. You can start taking those arms down towards the hips. Okay. And let's pause again. So let's twist around, reaching for the moon, this is called. It's a beautiful, poetic description of a movement that comes again from the waist. So we lift the right heel, we look to the corner or around over the left shoulder, and we raise the arms to reach for the moon. We come into the middle, breathing in, breathing out, twisting nice and slowly, left heel comes up. We twist the arms around to reach for the moon. We breathe in to return to the middle. We breathe out, reaching up 
twisting round, breathing in, breathing out, twisting to the other side. You can go as deep and as far as you want. Breathe into the middle, breathe out, round, breathe in. And visually imagine there's a moon up there that you're trying to reach for. One last one to each side. So we're going to finish by lifting the left heel and the arms swing round to the right. And then we come back into the middle. Okay, what have we got next? Maybe legs a little bit wider. We're going to bend one knee and then the other. And just track a little bit like this. So try and keep your knees out. Try and stop them collapsing in. Let's bring the arms up straight and through the legs. I want you to bend your right knee and take the arms over to the left. Breathe in, lift up and straighten. Breathe out, bend the left knee, arms come over to the right leg. Breathe in, up, breathe out to the other side. This is called paint the rainbow. So visually you imagine as the arms come up and over that you're painting a rainbow with those arms. And the legs doing all the work there. But we kind of don't notice because we're just doing this beautiful movement that feels so good with the breath. Breathing in to the top. Breathing out to the other side. One last one, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, and releasing. So let's do a few warriors. Warriors are really good for strengthening the legs and the hip joints. So we'll take warrior one first. So step up kind of towards the top of your mat and step your right foot back and you want the right foot i would say there was a clock there my feet foot's pointing towards one o'clock the other one's straight forward we're going to bend that front knee we're going to take the hips to the front of the mat sink the hips down as well try to keep the outer edge of your right foot on the mat that will help protect your knee or come up higher if that's not possible down there, but you really want the outer edge of that right foot to be in full contact. And then the arms can come up as much as you want. And we are strong warriors with just a couple of breaths. And then we release the arms out to the side and we step heel, step toe, heel toe, rather that right foot back a little bit further so we've got a longer stance here. Arms come out, hopefully level. You're pushing the energy away through the arms and you're also trying to rip the mat apart with your free feet. So engage all the muscles is what I'm saying. If you're trying to rip the mat apart, you start to engage all those muscles around the hips and the knees. And then we breathe in, we straighten through the front leg. The hips return to the front, right hand behind, left hand climbs. We follow into humble warrior, stretching up, stretching back as much as you want. And then straighten that front knee, draw that foot, right foot back in, a little bit closer stance here. Make sure you've got enough room. I'm gonna have to step back. Otherwise, I'm going to head back the wall. But basically, start to lift the right heel. You're going to bring the weight into the front. We're going to come into warrior three. Arms can be out here to the side or in front. And you lift and balance. Feel the strength in that left leg as you balance here. Push through the right heel, so engage that leg too, instead of the toes. Protect the knee and then release. We step back to the front. 
let's take a breath here let's just bring the thumbs into the sternum settle the gaze soften the gaze or close the eyes all together start to let the breath relax a little feel the heart beating through the thumbs start to soften a little And then let's go the other side. So this time I want to step the left leg back, right foot forward, right knee bends, hips to the front. We sink down, we keep that left outer edge of the foot in contact. So engage your leg muscles here and then arms up. While you're pushing up through the arms, try and release the shoulder blades down the back. So you're not scrunching up around the neck. Couple of breaths. And then we open to the side. So heel toe or step that foot a little bit further back. Hips are coming out to the side now as the arms are coming out too to the side. And again, trying to push the energy strong through the arms so that if somebody came and went like that you wouldn't move too much and again ripping that apart with your feet strong activation in the legs and let's release from that straighten the right leg left arm comes behind my back right arms coming up into humble warrior you can go as much as high and as far back as you like and then we return, we start to prepare for warrior three. So we step that foot back in towards the other. Again, I'm gonna to have to hop back here. Tiny, tiny zoom room, <laughs> but very thankful to have a zoom room at all. So we start to balance the weight on the right foot and lift the left leg. Remember, turn the toes towards the floor so you're activating your left leg as well strengthening around through the knee and then balancing on that standing leg and then slowly returning and we step back to the front well done i think you've worked really hard there so let's start to come down to the floor now oh no actually there was one more thing i wanted to do this is very good for strengthening around the hip joint and the muscles up here as well so what we're going to do today is i usually do tree but we're not going to do tree today because it might be too much for the standing leg to go through all the postures and to hold the one that's at the end so we're going to concentrate on the one that we normally do at the end i usually go baby tree tall tree open the branches and then knee to the front but this is the bit we're going to focus on today so all the weight goes into the left foot, ground down through it. Some people like a straight leg, some people like a bent leg. Decide what's, which one's for you. Come up onto the tips of your toes on the right leg. Start to steady your gaze at something. Ooh, wobbling already. And maybe bring the hands somewhere that feel right for you. We're gonna simply lift the left no, the right knee, sorry, the right knee. And you're just gonna hold it there for a few breaths. Well done, excellent. Maybe we should get our fire on by opening into cacti arms for a fierce goddess kind of look. And then see if you can take your leg out to the side while still holding that, maybe whoop, um, flex your foot as well. Ooh, and release. Let's have a little shake out. So any time that you can, if you want to strengthen around this area, this is an excellent one, just holding the knee up like this. But after a time, after some time, you'll probably realize that it's not really doing that much anymore because this area will have strengthened. So then you start to extend it and hold it like that and you've got to really think of something that you love and be really strong at this point 
um, to not let that leg collapse down. So can you see how I'm flexing my foot back? Every muscle in my leg is activated. And let's release. Woo! That is strong. So we have to do the other side, I'm afraid. So let's focus. Hands wherever you like. I'm going to do my cacti arms. It feels stronger to me. I'm spreading my fingers and I've got a lot of fire going on here. Engaging. And then we lift that left knee. And we focus into the challenge. And maybe if you're feeling good here, you can take that leg out to the side. Maybe flex the foot. Ooh, it's wobbly, but don't worry, it's good for you. And bring that knee back to the front. And if you're still feeling strong, extend it or do that as a completely separate exercise. Okay, I really think we should come down to the floor now. Okay. Let's breathe in. Let's lift those arms out to side. Let's stretch up. Let's breathe out. Fall forward, engage the hands with the calves or the floor. Breathe in, lift into table. Breathe out, release down. Breathe in all the way up. And breathe out the hands to the heart. We're only going to do one more full one, breathing in. And we use the third one to come down. Breathing out all the way down. Breathe in, in, tabletop. Engage your bandas by pulling your belly up and into the spine. Breathe out, release down. Breathe in, all the way up. Hands to the heart space as you breathe out. Breathe in, expand. Breathe out, release down. Let's bend the knees and let's come all the way down onto our knees and into child's pose any version you like so you could have extended arms out in front head down you can have the forearms under the head Some people have the knees together and the arms back. Whatever feels right, we're taking a few more breaths here. And start to relax and release. <clears throat> One more breath. And coming up, let's either swing the legs around to the side and come onto your bottom, or you've got that option again, crossing the calves and moving over the feet, but only do that if you really want to. So let's come into some nice soft hip openers. Now that we've strengthened around that area, we're just going to release softly into the hips. So nice soft butterfly, some people know this as cobbler's pose, Baddha Konasana, not Baddha Konasana, um, oh, I can't remember, anyway, soles of the feet together. It is Baddha Nasana, yeah, anyway, <laughs> who cares? Let's bring the soles of the feet together, knees out to the side, feet all nice and tall and connected through the seat, your sitting bones, and then softly fold into that gap. Whichever way works for you, if you don't, come down very far and you don't feel comfortable you can always use a cushion or a rolled up bolster a rolled up duvet or a bolster here 
Let's take five breaths. So after all that muscle activation and strengthening, you can start to soften, relax, start letting the breath work its magic again, each exhalation, letting go a little bit more of the muscles as we work towards our final posture. One more breath. Let's take the right leg out nice and long to the side. Maybe you want to keep that foot there. Um, we're going to turn over the straight leg. So try it there first, see what that feels like. Or if not, you can pull it in as far as you want until it feels the right position for you. So turn the torso over the straight leg and instead of trying, instead of thinking about getting your head down to your knee, um, think about softening a little bit through the leg and slowly working the heart space and the chin towards the toes. So you're elevating through the heart space, you're not crunching down. And then wherever you land, so to speak, you put your hands out to the side, and maybe at first, and then drop the head, allow the head to relax and release, and then maybe plant those hands under wherever they fell next to your leg. So we're not kind of gripping as such, we're just securing the hands there. So it's a kind of half, half, it's not full yang stretching of um, binding around the foot and pulling but it's not at the same time yin where you're completely completely soft well not completely completely soft let's breathe in and lift up let's bring that one in swap them around might be different on this side you might need um, a little support or you might need to adjust that foot you can also adjust your hips as well at this point so you can actually pick your bottom up and turn it towards your straight leg and that can be helpful for some people I find on this side that it's better for my knee so that's the way I'm going into this one. So always feel free to slightly adjust the posture. Um, so it works for your body. So again, we lift the heart space. We move forward with the chin. Hands land and then secure them under the leg if that feels okay to you. And then simply drop the head. Nice and soft. Try to let your shoulders be soft. Start releasing tension on the body. Each breath. And then let's come up slowly. Let's bring the legs completely out into dragonfly or kanasana. Again, I like to pick my bottom up here, and just move. It helps my sitting bones to connect properly onto the mat. And instead of engaging the feet here, because we've done all that muscle activation, I'm going to soften my feet, soften my legs. And then again, start folding forward, maybe using those props as you need. Let's take five breaths. One. Two. 
to if you want to move forward move forward from the belly space three four and five so let's slowly breathe in and start to walk the hands back up bring the body back up and we're going to come all the way down onto our backs now so pop the feet down on the mat and then lift the hips and then let the hips settle and you'll find that the lower back gets a nice bit of lengthening there feels good maybe do the same with the upper body lift the head for a moment and then let the shoulders settle out and down onto the floor there let's breathe in let's lift the knees in towards the chest maybe have a little circle gentle circle with the knees together ease out through the lower back and the hips and the pelvis let's go the other way too And then let's start to release the feet back onto the mat. Let's take just a little tiny sway here. So work the feet out to the, uh, towards the edges of your mat. And then just a little sway from side to side. You can turn the head a little bit as well. I tend to just naturally do that as my legs track from side to side let's take a nice deep breath in and as we breathe out lift the head towards the knees squeeze everything together and then release legs down the mat release into your shavasana last relaxation posture Whatever that means to you, get yourself comfy, get your blanket, make sure you don't get cold, maybe an eye pillow so you don't have to get up and turn the light off. Make the transition as easy as possible into this final posture. make those last minute adjustments and then completely allow the body to start to relax on the floor start to feel those points of contact between your body and the mat back of the head backs of the shoulders, backs of the arms and the hands, the lower back, backs of the legs and the feet. And then just rest your awareness on the top of the belly in that gentle rise and fall, the gentle rise and fall that the breath makes, softly rising as you breathe in. 
softly falling back as you breathe out. It's a lovely wave-like motion that carries you. Lovely wave like motion. Loving you with each breath into a deeper state where the body can just be nothing left to do and the mind stops following instruction and can just simply float out there on a long string like a kite in a soft, soft breeze. back to the body on the mat and feel again those points of contact. Backs of the feet and the legs and the lower back, the upper back, the backs of the arms and the hands and the shoulders and the back of the head. Let's start taking in some more active breaths and maybe wiggle the fingers and toes and start to bring some movement back to the body and find our way to transition by either stretching out or hugging those knees in and having another little sway or rolling onto a side for a moment or two. And then we make our way up to seated. And we give thanks for our practice by rubbing the hands together in gratitude. Maybe not just for our practice, but for other things and anything that pops into your mind. Having a roof over your head, having warmth on a cold night, whatever it may be. Let's rub the warmth into the hands, place the hands over the eyes. Let's breathe in together. And as we breathe out, release the hands down to the heart space. We bow the head and we say Namaste. Namaste. Thank you as always for joining me again. And take care out there. See you all soon.